Hi, I'm Tim. Welcome to Watchbox, and thanks for logging on. If you love this watch, email me, tmasso at thewatchbox.com. It's in the description below. It is your purchase and pricing email question line for buying this or any watch you see on any Watchbox platform. Please reach out to me directly. Email tmasso at thewatchbox.com for pricing details. Today, we are discussing a spectacular 2016 model year limited edition of 10 pieces in white gold created exclusively for the American market, and by that I mean the United States of America. This is the Laurent Ferrier Galley Traveler USA Enamel Edition, and it is all of those things wonderfully proportioned at 41 millimeters in diameter by only 13.4 millimeters thick. 49.2 millimeters from lug tip to lug tip, and 20 millimeters between the lugs. Now, the watch is fairly large for a dress watch, but I like the size here because it creates a larger canvas for the cloisonne enamel dial. Throwing it on my wrist, which is 16 centimeters in circumference, you can see it does have a lot of presence. Uh, it's definitely got more presence than something like a Patek Philippe 5231, and frankly, I would prefer this to Patek's cloisonne enamel world time. The watch probably requires a wrist no smaller than 15 centimeters in circumference. Again, mine is 16, so you can gain a sense of the scale. The watch has a wonderfully sloped case flank, so though it's not thin, it will slide easily under the dress cuff. Taking a quick look at the strap, dark blue, medium rectangular scale alligator leather. It features a uh, broad but folded edge, a monotone stitch, and a wonderful suede material underneath, either Alcantara or suede leather. You can see it is a brand new Laurent Ferrier strap, and then we have a matching Laurent Ferrier white gold deployant clasp. Now, not all Ferrier watches, even complicated ones, even special editions, have deployant clasps, so it is particularly nice to find that this one is thusly equipped. And you can actually see that the flank of the buckle matches the profile of the case. The lugs are downturned. They come to a little bit of a teardrop undertuck. Everything's of high polish, and it has that smoothed pebble galet shape that defines this model line. We have an onion-style crown, partially recessed, unsigned in vintage fashion. And you can see everything flows together seamlessly. The bezel into the case, into the case back. We have pusher adjusters, and these little notches are an age-old Swiss watchmaking trick that are designed to make it easier to dig in your nail, and then index more easily. That is why those little notches are often cut on classical travel time watches, particularly those from Patek Philippe in the middle of the 20th century. That's part of where that idea comes from. Now, the dial features a cloisonne enamel, so we have a combination of things going on. We have the cloison, or the gold wires that are shaped by hand to create the shapes of the land masses. We have Grand faux enamel on a solid gold dial base, up to 20 firings at 800 degrees centigrade. We also have the vitreous paint or the glass-based paint that's used to create the enamel. And so you have different colored enamel, but then you also have different weights of it applied uh, to create different shades. So different thicknesses of the same color applied in different fashions to different parts of the dial can create a very different impression. So you have both the color and then the thickness as it's applied, which is a very subtle technique as it requires several different firings to build up layers of enamel if you want greater intensity. For instance, the blue that you find mid-ocean where the waters are very deep and dark. We have white gold spear-shaped or assegai hands. We have white gold dart-style indices. We have little silver discs for the date, which is at 3 o'clock in the secondary time zone, which sits over at 9. And, of course, we have the image of North America as seen from, well, uh, getting darn close to the North Pole here, but this is perhaps a U.S.-centric perspective of the world. Now, we have that 24-hour format second time zone over at 9 o'clock. A lot of people mistake that for a date or a secondary date. That is the secondary time zone. And then you've actually got the real date over at at three, and so what happens is you can just index the local hour and it will drive the local date forward or backwards depending on whether you're traveling east or west. It is a work of art. There's a reason they only made 10 of these. It's extremely difficult to create a dial like this. 
and frankly, the movement is a work of art in its own right. Uh, automatic Winder Micro Rotor from the Galet Micro Rotor, a project jointly by Laurent Ferrier, Christian Ferrier, his son, and then Fabrique du Temps, which is a Louis Vuitton Moet Hennessy company that specializes in autologerie. And they all work together to create this movement, which is a micro rotor automatic winding caliber LF2301, 72 hour power reserve. It uses a lovely, uh, engine turned solid gold rotor that's actually on a jeweled staff for smoothness with an old school ratchet design to keep it quiet. 72 hour power reserve, three hertz or six beat per second rate. It is adjusted in six positions, not the chronometer standard of five. This is one better than that. And that is a big deal because a lot of times other watch brands will hide all of the deviation, the crap that is in the untested position, which is usually crown up or crown down. Six positions gives that inaccuracy, no place to hide. Now we have here a uh, two nickel phosphorus escape wheels. You can see one of them just below my finger. There is no Swiss lever here. It's a double direct impulse escapement, much like the historic Breguet natural escapement of 1802. So by eliminating the lever, these two wheels impulse the balance directly, each one only in the balance's direction of travel, which reduces friction, improves precision, and extends the power reserve. We've got a free sprung balance, so it can be adjusted precisely in those six positions. Then if you look carefully, you can see that an overcoil hairspring is used to better center the mass of the hairspring, so in any position, this watch will keep good time. Individually numbered, this is number 8 of 10, all of this water resistant down to 30 meters. Now the finishing is world class, and by the way, there's also a silicon part in there. The wheel that is not currently impulsing the balance is locked by a silicon blocker, so shock cannot disrupt or stall the movement like it can with a conventional natural escapement. Okay. Finishing, world class. You could see that there is a little rocker system that disengages and re engages the winding system as you manually wind the watch. We have a black polished and uh, profile beveled stainless steel bridge for the rotor. We have a stainless steel black polished skeletonized and interior beveled half bridge for the balance. And you could see internally there are four sharply creased. Uh, bevel junctions where bevels meet and that sharp cleft crease is a sign of hand finishing, almost impossible to achieve by machine. We also have one, two, three, four more of them on the bridges. And you can see that that interior angle over the center wheel is quite impressive. All of the jewel sinks are also mirror beveled. And you can see that this is the real deal laid down on the edge of the bridges. That englage is done by hand. That is not the engine turned and mechanical kind. That is at a bare minimum finished to a rounded mirrored shine by a human being when the process is done. We have lovely broad and luminous Cote de Genève laid down by abrasive wheel, not stamped. We have engine turning in several different sizes you could see on the base plate as well as uh, the bridge right here for the escapement. We also have satination on all of the wheels. And if you get close, you can see that the wheels are even interior beveled, something almost unheard of on watches in this price point. It's generally more associated with brands like Grubel Forsy and Ferdinand Bertou. And then we have black polished screw heads, and each screw has a chamfered slot and a chamfered circumference. This is some of the finest finishing you will encounter in the industry, and it deserves comparison to the likes of Ferdinand Bertou, Romain Gautier, Grubel Forsy, and Lang und Heine. A work of art on so many levels. Reach out to T. Masso at thewatchbox.com for purchase and pricing details.